Carries out of the way. Yep. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the East Enfield Township Board of Supervisors meeting. Tonight's meeting has been advertised to be held in person and online using Zoom with login and call-in information posted on our website. If you're calling into the meeting, I'd like to encourage you to remain on the call, but to also go to the Township website by Googling East Enfield Township and to log on to the Zoom meeting following the instructions on our homepage. Tonight's video and audio is being recorded. For tonight's meeting, Robert rules will still apply and the meeting will be run by a chairman who will be assisted by an employee managing the Zoom site. Everyone on Zoom will have their microphones muted in order for the audio to be heard clearly. During the meeting, both those present and on the line, only one person at a time speaks and they must be recognized by the chairman. Many people speaking at the same time combined with background noise makes meetings like this difficult to hear on Zoom. This rule will be strictly enforced. For people utilizing Zoom, you'll need to use the chat function to be recognized by the chairman. To be recognized as a chat function, you must be either a presenter who's on an agenda or a resident or business owner in East Hemfield Township who wishes to comment on an agenda item where you must text your name and address. <laughs> your request to speak will then be passed on by staff to the chairman to be recognized. The steps to speak utilizing Zoom are simple. Request to be recognized by the chairman via chat to speak. Once recognized by the chairman, unmute your microphone. After receiving recognition, speak. When done speaking, mute your microphone. For Zoom, any violations of the mentioned rule will be deemed to be acting out of order and your microphone will be muted immediately without warning. Continued violations will result in you being electronically removed from the meeting. Robert's rules applies for all those attending the meeting in person. All voting tonight will be done by roll call votes to ensure all votes are properly accounted for. Roll call will be conducted by the township manager. There will be no action taken on any non-agenda items of a non-emergency non-urgent nature that arise during the meeting. All such items will be referred to staff and will be handled at a later meeting. East Enfield Township's public comment rules will apply for all public comment. You must be a resident or a business owner of the township to speak. You must identify yourself by name and address before speaking and sign the guest log for meeting minute purposes or follow the chat procedure already discussed for Zoom attendance. Comment is limited to three minutes and must be about the agenda item being discussed with the exception of public comment at the end of the meeting for non-agenda items. No action will be taken during the public comment period for any non-agenda item with all issues referred to staff. We ask for your continued patience and understanding as we strive to serving the residents and businesses of the township while fully complying with the social distancing requirements prescribed by our governor. So with that, we'll now move on to our first agenda item. And that is a moment of silence in the place. So please rise. Now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <laughs> Okay, the first item on our agenda, we have a request to add to our agenda, DCNR grant application for Ahart Park phase two submission scope. Ms. Schweitzer. So I just recently received the um, budget for the Ahart Park phase two resubmission. We submitted last year for DCNR grant and were denied. And we'd like to resubmit this year. And the scope of the project based on the budget, we included a pickleball court for about 154,000. So I need to discuss that with the board, what they would like to do in terms of changing the scope. Um, and that's the reason why I wanted to add it. The uh, submission deadline for that is April 14th, I believe. Okay, any discussion of the board about adding that to the agenda? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to add that to the agenda. So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Bennett, is there a second? Second. Second for Mr. Wigglesworth. Ms. Schweitzer, please poll the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Russell? <clears throat> Aye. The ayes have it. Five to nothing. Next up, we have our consent agenda. The purpose of our consent agenda is to approve routine items that usually require very little debate or discussion. So with that, we'll open up the consent agenda to discussion. 
Nothing. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Lefevre is our second. Second. Second from Mr. Weaver. Ms. Schweitzer, please poll the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five nothing. Next up, we'll move on to our developments, our action items. And the first item is development services. It's nice to actually have something here after a couple months of hiatus. So we have the Lancaster AMA Realty Ventures LLC, a sketch plan and preliminary plan waiver for 1655 Columbia Avenue. And the action is on the preliminary plan waiver request for a retail development. Mr. Beck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for you gentlemen tonight is a sketch plan and preliminary plan waiver request that previously went to the Planning Commission uh, for their review and recommendation. Uh, they reviewed the, the application on uh, March 10th and uh, based on the fact that the um, project is redeveloping a current, current vacant restaurant which was formerly Friendly's at 1655 Columbia Avenue they are going to raise the building and build, construct a brand new building for Mavis Discount Tire. No phasing of the project. Um, they are basically going to be keeping the same footprint for the building and actually reducing the amount of impervious area. So with that, with that being said, um, staff supports the request to waive preliminary plan. The Planning Commission agreed and recommended approval of the preliminary plan uh, waiver request with the conditions that they record a, an approved land development plan and contribute a fee in lieu of uh, payment or fee in lieu of contribution equivalent to the preliminary plan application fee. Attending via Zoom is Luke Morrow from Soli Engineering. He's available if, if you gentlemen have any questions. Would you repeat the intended scope of the new building? The new building is basically gonna maintain the same footprint. Um, I did forget to mention that uh, based off of some staff uh, request and uh, guidance, they are actually gonna close the Eastern access to the lot. So um, all the traffic flow turning left into the site will go in via Princeton, I believe it is. And then it will be a right out um, onto Columbia Avenue from the Mavis discount tire. And um, I would have to defer to Luke. I believe they're gonna be a right in, um, or I'm sorry, a right out only, but it could be a left in left out, but at least there is distance, enough distance between the westernmost access and Princeton Avenue that there's no conflicts. Yeah, thank you. I kind of pretty much understood that from the narrative, but what I was wondering is the nature of the business that they intend to it, conduct. It's Mavis Discount Tire. So it'll be a tire retailer. Okay. And eight different uh, bays or different vendors is what Santa's they saying. They will have eight bays to, um, to handle customers. Um, I believe it's about 20 parking spaces which based off of uh, their analysis, they did use the um, ITE parking generation manual, uh, which came out to be between 17 and 19 um, for the uh, 30th percentile. So they are um, providing almost the bare minimum parking that they need. The Planning Commission asked them to um, look at reducing the 20 spaces to possibly 19. Um, they are, they are gonna consider that at that point, when they talked to the planning commission, they couldn't confirm that without doing more engineering. You got the ability to pull the plan up. I unfortunately am having some internet connection problems with my uh, computer right now. So, just have narrative. Yeah, so I, I, there was an error <clears throat> trying to load the plan up earlier. Diane, can you give me sharing, please? This is one motion. 
this up here. Thank you. So could you show the road that they're going to close, the driveway they're closing off? So right here's uh, Princeton um, is to the east. Right now there is an existing access <clears throat> Right where the number six is, yep. that will be that will be closed and curbed off. But they will still have the western access, and uh, um, it does appear from the design here that it would be a right out. Well, I should say it could be uh, right right out or left right out. It looks to be right out or left out. Can, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can, Luke. This is okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to um, just clarify a couple things, John. I know we had spoke during our preliminary, um, you know, conversations uh, a month or so back. So um, we were, you know, just, just to clarify for everybody, we're looking into the possibility to potentially do, um, I know what the right in right out was mentioned, but, um, you know, we need, to, we need to get into our full design to make sure, you know, trucks, you know, delivery trucks, uh, most likely a large size box truck can make that movement. So um, we haven't fully committed um, to that right in, right out at that um, at that unsignalized location on the west side there yet. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. But we, we did, we you know, we are taking the, uh, the recommendations of the town of consideration. We just need to make sure that all those, uh, you know, that design element does work. Thank you, Luca. I appreciate that clarification. And I, I know someone also asked about um, the eight service bays. So uh, like John said, um, the Mavis tire primary function is for tire sales and service, you know, rotating, balancing, brakes and stuff. But they do do, um, you know, other m minor, minor maintenance, topping off your fluids and changing windshield wiper blades and stuff like that as well. Okay. Seems... It's uh, basically a brownfield redevelopment, so. Yes, sir. It could almost be argued to be a stormwater plant. Any com more questions of the board? <clears throat> nope. Okay. Read the motion. The motion is to approve the preliminary plan waiver for Lancaster AMA Realty Ventures LLC land development project at 1655 Columbia Avenue, attach up file 21-17.01. Subject to the applicant reporting, recording an approved final land development plan and providing a fee in lieu of the contribution equivalent to the preliminary plan application fee. So do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Wigglesworth. Do I hear a second? Second. Second from Mr. Bennett. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Lefever? Aye. Mr. Russell? Hi, the ayes have it five to nothing. Um, thank your client for coming in and developing one of our vacant buildings. It's appreciated. Thank you very much. Appreciate working with the town, everyone. Have a nice night. So that concludes our development services. So we're gonna move on now to the appointment of Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator for East Hemphill Township, uh, Mr. John Kottmeyer. And I was, I don't know if I, uh, Ms. Garber wants to talk about this, or Ms. Schweitzer, so I'll just throw it out to the floor here. Mrs. Garber is probably the most appropriate. She's been in close Okay, Ms. Garber, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So before you this morning is a motion to appoint our new chief fire official, John Kottmeyer, as an additional deputy emergency management coordinator for East Hempfield Township. Unlike the primary emergency management coordinator, which is done through the state, deputies are simply appointed by the municipality. This is done as a part of things listed in his job description, as well as to ensure that all things are covered with um, being able to get him an emergency vehicle tag and then um, legalizing the use of lights and sirens on his vehicle. 
So you have a motion before you, and if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Seems like a no brainer at this point. Yeah. Glad that we are in a position where we can have two qualified people serving in that role, Ms. Carver. Uh, heavy emphasis on qualified, you've done a wonderful job. So okay. any discussion of the board? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to appoint John Cottmeyer, Chief Fire Official, as the additional Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator of East Enfield Township and approve the sharing of Deputy East Ma Emergency Management Coordinator services with East Petersburg Borough, Warwick Township, and Lidsboro as documented in the previous memorandums of understanding. So do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Wigglesworth. Do I hear a second? Second from Mr. Lefevre. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five to nothing. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And thank him again for joining our township. We appreciate it. He's actually on I the call, I believe. Say, I think he's on. Yes, yes he is. Yes. He is. yes. Okay. By phone. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. I hope I see his phone. Okay, now moving on. Centerville Road right of way. Begin the declaration of taking a right away. I, I would like to take a pause before I turn this over to Ms. Schweitzer to say about how pleased I am that we're getting to this point. <laughs> uh, it's been over 10 years and the light at the end of the tunnel is now there at this point with us having one of the largest road, the largest road project ever done in the township occurring with the uh, widening of Centerville Road from Columbia all the way to Marietta. It's been 10 long, hard years. And when we get to the point of doing this last step, this really is the last major step to taking this project out to bid. So this is a monumental moment. So Ms. Schweitzer, the floor is yours. It's not quite the last step. It's as far as the last <laughs> hard step at this point. Uh, well, there will be another group of these. Okay. Um, so we started this project, we hired Stantec to handle the right-of-way acquisition for the project. They have been working very diligently towards gaining right-of-way for the, I believe we had started with 48 parcels. Uh, they've settled on 27 and those two leases with 21 that still need to be settled. Before you're on your agenda tonight, you have 10 of those. So you will see another group of these coming through but they are still trying to negotiate and come to terms with that group and, and they're making headway. These, uh, they've reached out, they've made offers and it's kind of stopped. So to keep the project moving forward, this would be the next step in um, keeping that process, process moving forward. We're hoping that the negotiations start up again and they settle, but this declaration of taking is, is the next required step. So, any discussion of the board? I feel the July, August uh, breaking ground, September. I think we're looking at for the let date at this point. Their let date actually got moved to uh, January of 22. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's the date. I mean, it can come sooner, but it never comes. Utility coordination oh. and right away. Okay. And there's there's some difficult ones here. Um, that are going to take some time. Hopefully they get settled before we get to the courts. Okay. Well, we could still hope for a fall <laughs> with what the original <laughs> schedule was. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So the, the motion I'll read out, the motion is to adopt resolution 2021-08 to resolution 2021-17 to begin the declaration of taking for right away for Centerville Road South project. Is there any comments or questions? I didn't ask that about from the public. And having our one person, the public president in our room, see none, I'll entertain that motion. So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Bennett. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second for Mr. Weaver. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five nothing. Okay, next up um, is the retirement agreement for Mrs. Terry Snyder. Ms. Schweitzer. So uh, Terry Snyder has been our longest term employee. She is was coming up on uh, completing 38 years of service. She had chosen to retire 
And what you have before you is an agreement of retirement for Ms. Snyder. This, all you guys know how hard she has worked for the township over the years. Every one of those outings at the golf course, um, Saturday nights, Sunday nights. Um, Mr. Russell, this is Miss. Uh, this is the bookkeeper, senior I'm bookkeeper. Sorry. Yeah, two Terry's, but two yeah. Terry's, wrong Terry. Yep, yep. Um, so back to the bookkeeper side of things. Then, uh, <laughs> been one of those days. <laughs> um, we all know how hard she has worked over the yes. years with our budgeting and and other items that we've worked on, and has been the uh, very faithful steward of our towns of resources. So. With that, I will entertain a motion to adopt the employee retirement agreement for Terry Snyder. With regrets. So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Bennett. Is there a second? Second. Second for Mr. Wigglesworth. Ms. Spicer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five nothing. Thank you. Okay, moving on to old business. Is there any old business? We need to jump in with the, the grant at some point as well. Oh, that's right. We got to uh, take a step back. We did have added to the agenda the DCNR grant application for AR Park Phase 2 submission scope. Mm -hmm. Ms. Weitzer, the floor is yours again. And I guess we're going to have DMA talk in a moment. Uh, yeah, uh, Scott Hain is on, online. Uh, Joellen, can't think of her name. I'm sorry. Warren. Warren, thank you, has been uh, spearheading this project through, but Scott is aware of it. Um, the first submittal included improvements to the, based on the master plan to the, for the park, it included improvements to, for a driveway, a parking area, handicapped area next to our current pavilion, some landscaping, some additional trail work, another set of bocce courts, and another pavilion on the far side of the, um, playground area. That grant was denied with the last submission, but we were strongly encouraged by DCNR representatives to resubmit. They simply ran out of funding. They thought the application was very worthwhile and they encouraged us to resubmit. So we want to do that. In the meantime, there was discussion regarding adding to the scope and adding in specifically pickleball courts. The budget that you have in your agenda includes that it's 154,000 additional funds. However, that's going to kick over the project to more than what DCNR covers. DCNR grants cover 50% to 50% match. Their max that they would give out is 250,000. So we're, we're over that. So that would mean that the township would have to contribute about 40,000 in addition. Um, not sure if the township is, is at this point willing to do that, even though that there's there's definite need, uh, but we would have to prove that to, to DCNR to submit this. And it would cloud the submission, the second submission, and which would put the, uh, the award of the grant in jeopardy potentially. You had commented in the past that we get up to the $250,000 range that would kind of would not look favorably on the application too. For That's a correct. So if we pull that out, we're back down to 212 asking. So really when we're looking at that, it's also putting us in jeopardy of getting the whole grant denied a second time around. Correct. By going up to the full max 250. And if we were to do the 200,000 range, then we would be on the hook for over what, 140,000 roughly. No, 212. How much would it be? Two twelve. No, if we uh, if we did roughly two hundred thousand, it was ninety or ninety thousand over because of the two hundred fifty thousand dollar limit. When I saw in your the math that you had. Yes. So if we were to drop it down to two hundred thousand to make it in the window that DCNR would be applicable, yes. we would yes. be on the hook for another sorry ninety thousand plus the extra fifty thousand. We'd be on the hook for one hundred forty thousand dollars for this. We'd pretty much be paying the full almost the full cost of the pickleball court in a way. Not totally following your math, but I'll close. It, it's, yeah. it's basically we're not getting the match because we'd have to discount the, the grant application 
down to, to a number that our ECNR match would be, would be yes. supportive of actually funding, not the full 250 because they're trying to encourage it in multiple grantees. So you're gonna get a reduced amount than what they're saying they could give. Right. So it, it's, it sounds like it would be a pretty big financial commitment at this point to try and add that one additional item. Um, and if we were to really do it right, we'd have to still ask roughly in the 200,000 to 12 range uh, to have a shot at winning the money. Yes. Based off the previous feedback we got. Yes. How does this interface with our budget provisions? This would be a 2022 expenditure. Okay. So we'd have to budget for it. Okay. And we can we have three years to do the work, so we could budget across years. Thank you. There's actually some good budget news to talk about in a moment. It's actually some very good news. So but that's a different discussion. <laughs> so what's the, the thoughts at this point? Well, I think hearing the reasoning and explanation, I mean, I'm, I think we should submit the lower amount without the pickleball courts. Is that what we're discussing? Yeah. Uh, we're, we had the original application. We had the manager recommendation to stick with the original, but then we got the additional numbers. They weren't quite as bad. And it was actually, I think, worse at first when we were looking to think about it. Yeah, we were thinking higher numbers. But so, uh, is, Scott Hain got back to us and Joellen with a slightly lower number. We were thinking 200,000. This is kind of a little bit of a revised number than what we, was in the original discussion. I concur with Mr. Wigglesworth. <clears throat> okay. So the email I think that you had sent out Monday, Cindy, we were not going to include the pickleball courts. That was the recommendation. That was before I got the budget. Okay. And my recommendation was that we do not. And now that you got that information, okay. I'm, I this think confirms I'm, okay. that we should not. You, you say we should not. Correct. Okay. Yes. And that we're more likely to get the grant for the lower amount. Correct. Okay. Which not, would be the original. That's submission. not uncommon. Most of the grant agencies don't like you to ask, ask for the maximum amount. You gotta, you gotta get a little, give a little bit of a firmer commitment that makes your grant application stand out versus the ones that are just asking for the max. Even the first submission, we had to concede a bit and rework our numbers. So. What does what does the park step on people's toes? What do you guys? Well, we're supportive of the action recommended by staff to to eliminate the pickleball. Um, you know, there there are no locks in any of this, but we got a good. I think we've got a good indication that a resubmission would be looked upon favorably, and I think that that leads us to uh, to where we where we're going to be. So, I, uh, overall, I think it's the right move for the township. You know, we do have a an issue down the road with other types of recreation activities and we'll have to re relook at our situation our ongoing situation with uh, the pickleball at some point in the future mm -hmm. mr weaver only thing i was questioning was the eighty thousand dollars for the three rain gardens is that <laughs> something that dcnr wants in there or is that for stormwater management it just looks like a pretty big number the rain gardens are required for stormwater management. We did have that discussion with uh, Joel and Warren and uh, also Perry, and we could probably lower that number because of uh, using township staff. It's basically just digging a hole and then the proper planting or the basin and proper plantings. So if we actually, that's a good thing because with these Eastern applications, the township staff can be served as matching funds. Right. Too. So that's actually right. not. A... I think that's why when you look at the budget, uh, some of the, the items are in yellow. Okay. Uh, Scott, is that correct? The budget that was submitted, there are some yellow items, and one of those is the trail, which I know we discussed that the staff could do, um, and that and also discussions about the um, uh, the rain gardens. Yeah, that's. It. Hello, this is Scott Hain. Yeah, that is the the intent of the way that was broken out. You, it, it's priced and it's it's allocated that it could be done all through bid, and township staff would not have to, depending on their workload at the time. But um, but there was a thought that some of those items could be could be done by staff. Staff has put the trail in before, and 
I believe they've built basins, but again, we don't always count on their availability. So we, we work it in that it, it could be bid at prevailing wage and, and accomplished that way. And like Mr. Wigglesworth mentioned, if the if staff does do it, the match then is, is a little bit more favorable to the, to the township. I answer your, your question at that point. Yeah. yeah, I would encourage if we can do some staff time. That's actually a great match. Yeah, yeah actually, DCR grants I've worked with in the past, it's actually pretty, pretty good numbers when they factor in staff hours and equipment. Yeah, and, um, and we'll rework that before we submit it. I mean, you, you can. I think you show kind of what what DMA has. It's just you you have an opportunity as you go along in the grant process to designate how you're going to make your match. And that's something DMA can work with you on. Okay. I thought that was done before the submission, but maybe not. No, and Scott can correct me. Mr. Hain can correct me if I'm wrong, but you do have, you do have some wiggle room after you get awarded about how you, that's the way I've understood, you have some wiggle room after you get the award about how you're going to do your match and whether you're going to do some of it labor or some of it monetary. Yeah. That's yes, we, we, we typically try and specify that with the application, but sometimes through sort of those negotiations that go on after you've submitted, that can be, that can be adjusted then. It's just a, it's a tool in your toolbox at that point. So, yep. yeah. Okay. Any more discussions at this point? Anything from the audience? Okay. Seeing none. So I will make uh, the motion would be the motion is to submit the original DCR grant application for the Ahar Park Phase Two submission scope as discussed tonight. So, is there a motion? So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Lefever. Is there a second? Second. Second from Mr. Bennett. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth. Aye. Mr. Lefever. Aye. Mr. Russell. Aye. The ayes have it. Five nothing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hain, for putting that all together. Appreciate it. Now we'll move on to old business. Now, is there any old business? There's nothing on the agenda. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I don't recall exactly where I read it in preparation for the meeting, but to my reading, uh, David Martin <laughs> uh, Associates is projecting a completion of the conditional use um, revisions prior to working on the sign ordinances. And I'd like to know the status of that and see if we can set some goals for getting those major projects concert, con uh, completed. Monday evening zoning hearing board had the best part of three hours dealing with two sign issues. And there was need, I would say, in those discussions that a revised sign ordinance might have helped facilitate and, and make those meetings much less involved. Uh, again, I just think we need to really keep concentrating on this. If we must complete the conditional use first very well, but can we say when that can happen and when we can get into the signage? I'll turn it over to Mr. Beck. What's the schedule at this point that you can, if you can, if you have that available right now, the kind of, even if it's rough right now. I hate to pass the buck, but I'm gonna ask uh, Scott Hain to weigh in because uh, his finger is directly on the pulse. Him and uh, Nick are working on it. Um, we are um, anticipate having a, a draft back to staff and then to the planning group in the very near future, but he can uh, address the question about how it's all uh, intertwining with the, the signed ordinance update as well. Hello again. Um, just maybe to clarify, it's we're we're trying to process these sort of in sequence, but we're we're at we are working on that signage ordinance change. That that's not static. We're, we are we're working on that, and we have a good bit of that completed already. We've done interviews with multiple um, township officials and with uh, professionals in the uh, in the industry, and we have highlighted and identified areas that we think should be should be adjusted. What we, what we didn't want to do and what we were trying to say with that is that we don't want to bring them both in in front of the board at the same time. So we'd, we'd really like to get that conditional use in, which we've provided 
uh, our, our draft to staff for review of that. So that should be ready to go very soon that the conditional use will be ready to go through committee and, and get comments and then, and then move forward towards a, approval. And I'm saying conditional use, what we're, we're, you know, we're trying to eliminate as many conditional uses that would become before you as possible with that, with that activity. Um, but like I said, we're following right behind it is the, is the sign ordinance. And we have, like I said, we have a good bit of that work done already. Um, so it will be ready as soon as the conditional use is done to then come into committee and, and move through the process also. Thank you. Um, very well. Uh, I'm glad to hear that they're working on con concurrently and that uh, we will be moving to hopefully a conclusion of this. I do have another item of old business. Uh, there was some brief discussion about the possibility of discontinuance of the COG if we go to the LIMC. And uh, I guess I'm reminded, maybe Mrs. Uh, Schweitzer, were we looking to other members of the COG as to what they were doing or where did we leave this and should we chat about it a bit more now or should we actually take an action? The uh, next COG meeting is next week, I believe. It is, yes. And it, the agenda is being formed and one of the items on the agenda is should the COG continue? So in order to have that discussion, it would be beneficial if we knew the position of the board. Okay. Manheim Township has joined LIMC as well as, well as East Hempfield. East Petersburg was, uh, I'm not quite sure what their status is. So we just need some direction. My, my opinion is that even if the COG meets less frequently, it's a free COG and it doesn't cost us anything. And it's, it's a smaller group than LIMC. And it's more of a Hemfield based um, group with Manham Township thrown in into the mix. Uh, it doesn't hurt for us to belong the two. So that would be my, my position. Well, I would, I, I'm hearing in that, uh, what I would make a positive is that if East Petersburg stays in a COG and we're working with them in fire commission, there's some benefits there for that working together. I also look at there's also benefits of having a COG that represents your immediate area too, where LMC is a much more central part of the whole county. We have one group that is much more oriented to just this area. So I, I, I don't see any thing that hurts to belong the two. If we just lack agenda items, we just don't meet. Um, so I think I wouldn't recommend necessarily we dissolve, we dissolve the one at this point. And it might right now be our only way where we include East P too, depending on how they feel about IMC or not. So I don't know how the rest of you feel, but. Have any of the other members of the club Wait in. West Hemphill has kind of indicated a little bit that they're a little iffy and if they want to stay. Obviously, if members pull out, then it goes away. Okay. Uh, so, you know, and my hope is that it really doesn't hurt. It's, there's no fee like there is for IMC. Um, we can meet as frequently as we want or infrequently as we want. And it does allow a little bit better sharing between municipalities than when you don't have a COG. So, I think there's a lot of benefits to having a cog and I don't see any reason not for not belonging to multiple ones. So I know it's a drain on staff, so maybe we just don't meet as frequently. That could be part of the- I think it's probably a good solution. The discussion and maybe we meet once a year, even once a year, getting the two largest municipalities in the county together just to talk about issues that are, that are between Manhattan Township and East Hemfield is worthwhile. We're getting East and West Hemfield talking about school district issues, which don't really apply the relics of LIMC is, I think, a worthwhile function. So meeting just for the sake of meeting is a waste of time. Um, so if, if that's starting, and I would agree, we've been light on agendas. So if that's starting to be an issue, maybe we'd start, the, a discussion might be, instead of dissolving it, what is the frequency that we, what we really should be meeting? Any other feedback? As far as I'm concerned, if the COGS are accomplishing anything, doesn't cost us anything. 
why, I mean, why not continue with it? If it's, if it's not productive, obviously it goes away. But if those who are participating feel that it's worthwhile, well, the most support staying with it. The one thing it did do, if it didn't do anything else, the one thing it did do is it forced the LMC to make necessary reforms and changes which was a good thing. So that that was, if the cog accomplished nothing else, kind of like the uh, the Protestant Reformation of the Catholic Church, it did, it, it did its part to make some necessary reforms to an organization that had gotten off track and, and now it's back on track uh, because of what this cog did. So, yeah, so I think you got, you got enough to talk direction. about for next week yep. with us, so. Thank you. Anything else for old business? Any new business? Anything? Okay. Traffic commission report. Okay. Mr. Fever, all yours. Traffic commission meant tonight, and we uh, moved to accept staff recommendations regarding some changes at the Shank Road covered bridge intersection, including some stone ballast to help defray damage to the neighbor's property and also relocation of stop signs, which should make them more functional uh, as people exit the bridge and come to the bridge and maybe see the signs and et cetera. So we're looking forward to those changes, hopefully being a resolution to that question. Um, we, uh, have public works is prepared and going to implement the 25 mile an hour painting on the road surface of Spring Valley Road and placing some digital speed monitors um, and then watch how those efforts bear fruit, hopefully, uh, that we know when we do final paving in uh, or repaving in uh, August that we maybe know better or the best that that is the best place for location of that painted surface and things. Other items of Sharon Road drive uh, neighbor concerns and Main Street speed in Landisville are still ongoing with no response from PennDOT on Landisville. At the Landisville post office we've uh, been advised of a problem from the postmistress of neighbors parking parking in front of the post office for their parking for their v for their homes and their residents. And we're going to post 20 minute signage there. <clears throat> and the, unfortunately the police will need to mark tires and then go away and then come back and whatever. But nevertheless, we hope this effort will make it clear to those neighbors that they are not to park there. Um, it's unfortunate we need to do this, but we do. And there's also a, a bit of a concern with the uh, handicap space we created across the street and how that can be interfaced with the postal truck access to the post office. That was the essence of the meeting. And there's my report. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fever. So next we'll move on to development services project report, Mr. Beck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first on the the list is the official map. Uh, we did receive the um, County Planning Commission review and um, as expected, it was favorable. Um, it was at the Township Planning Commission March 10th. It was their first um, introduction to the official map and we'll be moving on seeking a recommendation from the Planning Commission at their April meeting. Uh, as of last Friday, um, township staff submitted the transportation needs identification forms for the 2023 to 2026 tip for the following bridges, intersections, and roads, the Amtrak bridge over Church Street, EH1, the South Chickies Road Bridge, EH3, the Farmingdale Road Bridge, EH7, the Dairy Road Bridge, Lidditz Road and route, uh, State Route 72 intersection, Stony Battery Road and State Route 23 intersection, Good Drive and Roarstown Road. Um, 
I believe it was the first meeting in February or maybe the second meeting in February. Um, there had been some discussion about trees removed at a property along Harrisburg Pike. Um, I have since received an inspection report from the County Conservation District, which was attached as part of my um, report. Actually, no, it was the other thing from County Conservation District, I apologize. But um, Eric Howell from the County Conservation District was out at 2355 Harrisburg Pike for an inspection on a um, alleged complaint regarding the removal of the trees. Uh, during his inspection, he talked to the owner and uh, confirmed that there was no violation and the owner was removing ash trees due to disease from the ash borer. Um, what's attached to my report is the Lancaster County Conservation District Progr Program Activities Report for 2020, and um, which indicates that Chapter 102, Chapter 105, and MPD, MPDES programs, um, three projects had their uh, permits terminated, which is a positive sign that the projects were completed. 13 projects received their permits, and uh, the County Conservation District performed 26 inspections and conducted five in, uh, complaint investigations. Uh, staff met with the development team for the Brookside Health uh, Lancaster Medical Center Hospital and Brookside Development and the state road base course uh, should be um, installed in late March to early April. The, devel the development team is um, moving forward and planning to dedicate the state road uh, to the township at the April 20th meeting. Um, <clears throat> At this point in time, the developers indicated they have a meeting scheduled in May of 21 to learn if they have received the grant funding for the um, to assist them in installing the wearing course for State Road. Uh, they, uh, regardless, they are scheduled to install the wearing course in um, early to mid June. Uh, 701 Stony Battery Road. The project had a pre-construction meeting. Um, Staff also um, issued a demolition permit for the existing house and barn on the property. And the developer has agreed um, to forego the uh, deferral agreement for the sidewalk and install the bituminous trail as part of the site work and construction of the building. The board, as part of the consent agenda, did approve a time extension to record the plans for 701 Stony Battery Road and 791 Stony Battery Road. Staff met with uh, the development team for the project at 3072 Nolt Road uh, to discuss uh, the township engineer's review letter that occurred on March 10th. Staff anticipates a revision submission um, no later than March 26th. Uh, in anticipation of um, a turnaround review by DMA and then scheduling uh, for the PC for their review and recommendation at the April 14th meeting. Uh, Oak Tree Outdoor Advertising applied to the Zoning Hearing Board and met with them on Monday, March 15th uh, for request, two requested variances, one for height and one for dwell time for message, message changes the Zoning Hearing Board did approve both variances um, with some uh, negotiation. The applicant agreed to reduce the height from 45 feet to no taller than the building and agreed um, to, instead of 10 second dwell time to a 20 second dwell time for the digital billboard. The uh, Ducklings Daycare Project 3101 Yellow Goose Road went to the Planning Commission on March 10th. The Planning Commission reviewed and recommended conditional approval of the um, final plan and conditional and approval of the modification of the associated modifications. The final plan is tentatively scheduled for supervisor action at the April 7th meeting. We received a uh, final plan submission for the Ironstone Building Materials Project on Genoese Drive. The gentleman just uh, acted on a sketch plan and waiver request for the Lancaster AMA Realty Ventures LLC project at 1655 Columbia Avenue. 
and we have received a lot consolidation plan for the farmstead at Lime Spring Square, which is now owned by Homestead Village. The plan is to consolidate all of the lots into one single property. And they also filed a revised um, final land development plan to uh, redevelop the clubhouse. They will raise the existing clubhouse, which was a single family detached dwelling that was converted to the clubhouse. And in its place, they will build a new clubhouse with uh, some associated parking. And thus concludes my report. Any questions of uh, John at this point? Just a quick question on, on, the, on the 791 and, and, and that uh, development, the, th the three, 701 and 791. Um, as it pertains to, to uh, walking trails, uh, it's, it, it seems like the, the projects are stretching out a little bit. Is there any possible way that we can get the, 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 the trails in before construction is completed? It is, it's very likely that they will be in before the project's completed. Um, since it's bituminous, it, it's all dependent upon their schedule um, to pave. Most likely they will do that at the same time they're going to pave their uh, parking areas. However, staff will reach out to them and um, try and get them to agree to at least um, give us a timeline for when those trails will be installed and ensure us that they'll be installed prior to the completion of the building. Well, I, I expect I'm just I'm just thinking that this last construction is going to take a, a, a little longer. Um, maybe it, it does make it does make sense, Tom, um, due to the fact that they were two different projects. I didn't have a chance to talk with the developers about 791. Um, it was one of those things for whatever reason they wanted to keep separate. Um, however, they have not submitted the agreements uh, and we do anticipate having the same conversation with them about installing the trail as part of construction rather than a deferment. However, they might, um, because of timing for their project, they might um, pursue the deferment agreement in order to record the plans at this time, but then um, as part of construction, install the trail. But um, I understand your point and uh, I will reach out to the development team and have that conversation with them. Perfect, thank you. Any other discussion at this point? The only question I got is we're talking about the, the we always brought up the uh, ash bore thing with that one property. Do we know what has been going on with the riparian buffer and all the tree planting along that same creek all beyond that, that one property? What's the, what's the conservation district doing there? Are you specifically talking about the trees being planted? Yeah, there's a well, even, even beyond that, you go all the way up to uh, if you, it's a long, it's a very long stretch. There's multiple properties at this point. So what's what's the conservation district doing? It, it, it actually does not involve the conservation district. It's the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay. Okay. They have a program where they will come in and remove invasive species and plant native trees to um, establish a uh, more distinct and um, more fruitful riparian buffer um, along Swar Run. They're actually doing it in multiple areas. They, um, we have talked to them. Have they installed the trees? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They installed uh, trees here on the Aher Park property as part of that project. Um, it's actually uh, a very, um, very good endeavor because it's actually free to any property owner that wants to install the trees. The Alliance for the Bay actually does the work. They have contractors that will come out and remove any brush or anything else. They actually um, had a um, very large project uh, just south of Harrisburg Pike where it meets, um, intersects with the Yellow Goose Road where they had to remove um, bamboo that had grown out of control. They had a contractor in there to uh, successfully remove it so they could plant their trees. Um, the township owned property that's along Harrisburg Pike. Uh, we had trees planted there. So um, they actually get into an agreement with the property owners um, for maintenance where they can come in and do the maintenance in the first two years. And that's the, really the, the key of the uh, key portion of the growing season or the growing um, uh, time span for the trees. 
where it's it's integral for the trees as far as making sure that um, the, uh, I can't remember the name, the protectors that go around the uh, trunk of the tree, that they're maintained, um, they're engineered to split once the tree actually gets large enough. It protects them from birds um, going in and affecting the growth of the tree. And then they actually spray um, weed barrier around the tree to prevent um, any obtrusive growth that, that would occur in that area. And after that two years, then the property owner um, is well established with maintenance and, and um, it then takes over for, from the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay to maintain those trees. Okay. Well, glad we found out why they were putting them up. It'd be nice next time they give us a little bit of a heads up. We could actually promote what they're doing if we kind of know. We, we did, we did. We had it on our township website. We actually, uh, um, I believe we put it out on our township newsletter. Or if we didn't, we, we uh, put it on the website and um, tried to get as much help as we could for the Alliance for the Bay. Um, the one downside is um, we were trying to um, get them to enact easements on uh, for the riparian buffer. And it was one of those things where we couldn't, um, couldn't come to an agreement or um, work through that because of the nature of the program. I could also add to support John. Uh, the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay is doing a project at the, at Hark. Uh, they're in the process of uh, uh, planning and executing that. So th they do a, a very nice job uh, with it, with this this kind of thing. And and again, to John's point, for two years you don't have to do anything. They take care of all the all the maintenance. So uh, pr pretty good. Yep, sounds like a good deal. Yep. Okay, Miss Schweitzer, manager's report. So you, uh, earlier this evening, we mentioned that Centerville Road let date has been moved to 113-2022. We discussed the uh, rights away and the status of those. Uh, Church Street paving, uh, not a whole lot more to report other than your action and we need to advise the residents of that status. Old Rogers Town Road, we're struggling with that. That still has a let date of 9-21-2021. We're probably not going to I'm not going to say that. <laughs> it's still set for September. We're kind of stalled. Uh, PennDOT is processing the funding supplement that we approved. Uh, this is not on their ECMS program. It's still paper, which takes even longer to process. They're moving through the process, but at this point, uh, uh, McMahon, no, not McMahon, McCormick Taylor doesn't have the necessary uh, supplement in place to continue their process. Farmingdale Road, um, not very good news there. McMahon is struggling to get through the HOP submission. They're now on their fourth review letter with comments. They have not gotten that through. They need to resubmit probably another week yet. That, that review came last week. We also got a report back from the uh, erosion and sediment control people. There's some comments there that need to be worked through. They're still plugging away. Uh, we are hoping for a resubmission. It does push the uh, let date back probably about two more weeks. Still moving along with the uh, right of way acquisition as well. We haven't secured any of those at this point. I think there's six of them. As John mentioned, the state road projects are gearing up and, and starting again for the season. Um, we did hear from PennDOT regarding the interchange their completion date was 831. At this point, they're looking at an 89 completion of this year. So that's going to be um, finalizing as, as the weather breaks. Commerce Park, that, that middle section of the interchange, they're still waiting for that utility pole to get moved from the one um, access point. And then John explained what's going on with the state road dedication and reopening state road, which should happen probably on the 22nd. Four Seasons in Blue Collar, the HVAC system. We had a meeting there this afternoon. Uh, Tom Bennett was there as well as Mike O'Brien, some of the um, engineers involved and also the Blue Collar people. We seem to have gotten through to a new schedule, which probably will, for their opening, which probably will be 
June 1st or before. The HVAC units will eventually get there. Their work will be completed probably end of April, beginning of May, give us some cushion. So we are hoping for a June 1st opening, possibly middle of May. There will be discussion of the um, rec authority next week regarding some additional concessions regarding rent payment. The authority granted them concessions for February and March. They will probably need something for April and May. I believe Tom has some thoughts about what he would like to see happen. Uh, Michael Bryan also has some thoughts. So that's gonna be a discussion point next week. The authority is having Blue Collar come to that meeting uh, to discuss and update the authority on what the progress is and, and their plans. They have moved down to the snack bar area and started renovating that in an in, in effort to uh, gain revenue quicker for them. So we're thinking about maybe tapping into that revenue source, not for the full rent, but at least a partial of that rent would come back to the township. Uh, American Rescue Plan funding. I've sent an email out to the board. According to the reports, the township should be getting $2.4 million over two payments, probably one in June of this year and sometime in 2022. At the time that the email went out, we didn't know of any conditions other than there could not be used for a tax reduction or pension funding. I participate in, in the PELRAS conference today. It appears that there are more federal regulations coming out for use of that money. So um, I need to explore that a little bit further. So there will be conditions on that money expenditure. SRBC and the Four Seasons permit for uh, well water extraction uh, are coming due. The submission deadline is November 15 of this year. We are working with DMA and uh, Joe Muha, uh, superintendent at the golf course. We had a meeting with them. We're talking about groundwater withdrawal, uh, monitoring and processing the, during the season and watching that withdrawal. We were warned by SRBC that they would be looking for a reduction in our current uh, withdrawal number. So uh, we'll have to look very closely at that and see what we can we can uh, accommodate that or have to accommodate that. What's driving that reduction? I think that's a common request. Every time there's a submission, they have worked with Hemfield Water. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very sensitive to that matter. Hemfield, they, they want to settle with Hemfield Water and they anticipate doing that within the next two months and finalizing that sometime this year. They don't want to negotiate with us and discuss ours until theirs is settled. Is what we were told by um, SRBC. So the, the water authority is still capped, right? Water, yeah, they're trying to cap us and they've capped the water authority too. Right. So when they say settle, what does that mean? They've been negotiating and there was a court um, filing on behalf of Hemphill Water okay. regarding the, the severe decrease in the amount of withdrawal from the aquifer. I don't know the details of it. Uh, I haven't talked to Steve for a while. Um, but according to SRBC, it, it's very close to being negotiated into a settlement of something they can live with. But they weren't willing to um, commit or discuss ours until that was settled other than the fact that they wanted a reduction. So a reduction in what Hemfield water takes from the aquifers is made up from water from Lancaster City. Yes, that's how they solved their issue. Yep, so we, water that comes from a spring, we can't withdraw, but we can draw water from the Susquehanna. That's unclean, <laughs> mind boggling. The reason why it's called Indian Spring. The Waterworks grant, uh, we had gotten $20,000 to do a study regarding um, 
planning out uh, access for pedestrian and, and bicycles along the Harrisburg corridor. We are having a stakeholders meeting next week, hopefully. Um, DMA is putting out the information for that probably tomorrow. So that's moving forward. Um, in terms of group reports, we did have a public works group meeting. Um, the main focus of that meeting was truck routes and what we have, what we don't have, how we post them, the backup data that we have or don't have. So what's going to happen is the planning department will be putting together some supplemental information presented to the board and look at this as a whole project, as a holistic kind of view of the township, how trucks go to and from our borders and the best method to get them there. And then to then follow that up with how truck routes should be posted properly so that enforcement can happen. That's all I have, unless there's questions. Any questions to the board? Oh, I did have one other thing. We did have interviews this evening regarding uh, vacancies we have on some commissions. We currently have vacancies of the two planning commission members as alternates and also uh, alternate position in the zoning hearing board. So those, some of those uh, interviews occurred. We are going to re-advertise and uh, look for additional applicants and, and future interviews so that we have a larger pool to pool from. Is there one alternate planning commission member, is he also possibly interested in being on the zoning hearing board still? We didn't pursue that. Uh, he did indicate that at one point, Mr. Geringer. He did when he, <clears throat> he, did when he uh, submitted his name for uh, as being interested. Maybe he could, to get some closure on that. He can. We can reach out to him. And so we might have three vacancies on planning commission then. True. We will reach out. And that was all I had. Any other discussion of the board? Okay. We'll now open this up to public comment. Is there any public comment? Ms. Garber, do you have anything on your own? I have received nothing. Okay. Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comment. Any more comments of the board? Okay, seeing none, we will adjourn the meeting at looks like 8.08 .08 p.m.